Well, good morning, everyone. So it has officially been two weeks since I lost my job. And even though it has only been two weeks, somehow I have already reached that point where I have completely lost track of what day of the week it is most days. I feel completely discombobulated. And so today my plan is to do things to try to get back on track and back into a groove and back into a rhythm. And so the first thing we're actually gonna be doing today because it just has to be done, I've been putting it off for too long, is organizing and cleaning up my office because it is a disaster. It is not conducive to being productive and it just has to get done. But in addition to that, I have also gotten a bit behind on plant watering. So we are gonna be watering or checking on and watering the plants that need to be watered today. And then I also have a little bit of spring cleaning that I have been putting off for way too long and it is something that is gonna make my plants a lot happier if I actually do it. So we're gonna try and get that done today. And we have a bunch of other things too, like just some small planty tasks and various other things that we're gonna be doing as well. But I did wanna start off by showing you guys a little bit of a surprise. I do have a new plant that I'm about to show you. And I know I said I wasn't gonna be buying plants, but one of you reminded me that I still had a gift card for my birthday to a local nursery here at Callaway's. And you reminded me on the perfect day because as I told you guys, when we did the repot and chat about me having lost my job, I mentioned I was having problems with my personal computer. Unfortunately, I did end up having to buy a brand new computer, not the money I wanted to be spending right now, but the other one, I mean, it was a 12 year old computer, you guys, it, it, it needed to be replaced. It got to the point where it just wasn't compatible. The system requirements were not compatible for anything pretty much. So I had to buy a new computer and then I spent the day after setting it up trying to find insurance, which is always a headache. And I was feeling kind of down at the end of that day. And that's when one of you reminded me that I had a gift card where I could go use that to buy a plant without actually spending any money out of my pocket. So that's what I did. So what I ended up getting is this Hoya Carnosa Exotica Tricolor. And if you'll remember when I originally went shopping with that gift card, we did look at this plant and I was eyeing it. I was thinking maybe I would get it. And then I decided to hold off and I'm kind of glad I held off because honestly, the ones they have now are much fuller and lusher looking than the ones that they had when we went, I guess that was almost a month ago now. So yeah, I'm glad I held off. And honestly, I think it was a little bit cheaper too by about $5, but it looks gorgeous. Absolutely love it. Love how it has the pink colored stems. And this thing is already putting out a ton of new growth. However, as with most Hoyas that I see in my local nurseries nowadays, it is in some soil that is almost like pure peat, which is not really what Hoyas need to be in. So we might repot this plant into a more appropriate soil today as well. We'll just see if we have time because we really need to get all these other things done first. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. And like I said, we're gonna start with my messy, messy office. So let me take you over there and show you what's going on. All right, you guys, so honestly from here, doesn't look that bad per se, but let's go look at what's actually going on behind and around the desk. So this is a complete and total wreck, you guys. This is not how I normally operate. This is not how I normally live. And it is really stressing me out. It is not at all conducive to getting things done. I mean, can we just, can we just, can we just talk about this? Like, seriously, I, I can't. And then over here, like, I think we even have, yep. Mm -hmm. See that? That is a Kleenex box from when I was sick, like, what, three weeks ago now? It's completely empty. I just have not put it in the recycling. My old laptop that I just mentioned I had to replace with the lovely new laptop. But once again, I had to return all of my computer equipment. So I don't have a monitor up here, but I do have a monitor still. I just need to get it set up up there. And then a bunch of this stuff, like everything in there, with the exception of my sketchbook, is related to the job I no longer have. So we can get rid of that shit. We just really need to get this cleaned up and organized. I also just have a ton of things that have to be plugged in via USB to charge. So like this is my like wireless mic that I use sometimes for recording. I have so many things and I've been just plugging them into my computer and there's just too many of them. So I did, right before I lost my job, buy, where is it in this mess? Where the heck is it? Oh, there it is, it's over there. I bought <laughs> HDMI cord randomly on the floor. I'm telling you guys, I can't live like this. This is not gonna help me get back in the swing of things. So I bought this thing, which is like a charging port station thing. 
so that I can get everything kind of organized that needs to be charged, all just charging into this one thing. So we're just gonna jump right into this, you guys. I'm just gonna try to get everything that needs to be thrown away or recycled, taken care of first, and then we'll just start getting everything else organized. And real quickly, hi, beautiful rattlesnake Calathea. You're the one thing looking pretty on my desk. you guys well this is looking a thousand times better i mean we are nowhere near as messy i've got space over here to have my planning notebook out and be able to write on it and not feel like i'm running into everything if you know what i mean got my coaster up here for when i have my coffee in the morning we've got the monitor set up here but i do not have the right kind of cable so i did just order the one that i need to be able to connect this particular type of monitor to this particular type of computer. It should be here tomorrow. I do have a full-size keyboard hanging out back there because sometimes I like to use this as a secondary monitor and then I use that keyboard and then obviously my mouse to control everything. And I now have space over here to actually put this up there when I want to use it as a second monitor, which is nice. And over here, you may notice we have a ton of space, which is perfect because Toby, likes to lay on the desk when I'm working. And if there's not space over here for him to do so, he likes to come lay on the actual computer, which does not help mom to be productive. So over here though, we do have the hub, the charging hub station thing set up now. Now, obviously you're always gonna have this like ridiculous looking cord situation going on, but that's fine because we had just enough ports. This was a 10 port one just enough ports to plug in everything I wanted to plug in. And this space right here is for the camera that I'm using right now when I'm not using it. And this is that cord that charges that. And I did also have room to plug in the cord to charge my gimbal, which I'm also using right now. And so I'll be able to put that up here. Actually, I would have to set it on top of the printer, but that's no big deal. But anyways, to charge. So I can charge everybody at once in an organized fashion, which makes me happy, but also, I wanted to mention to you guys that I did order, when I ordered the charging station before I lost my job, one of the digital microscopes and I have not used it yet. So I think we're gonna use that here in a bit to check on some of my plants that I've been treating for spider mites to see if perhaps all the spider mites are dead and gone. So that should be exciting. But yeah, I am like so happy with this. Like, look at it, so much more organized so much more conducive to getting things done. And speaking of getting things done, we have more things to do. So let's go ahead and move on to our next task. All right, you guys, well, I'm definitely feeling better that we got that done. And so we are gonna water plants next real quick because you guys are super observative and I'm sure some of you noticed there was something tilted up against the right side of my desk and you were probably wondering why I didn't move that or do anything with it. So what I'm about to show you is actually my next long overdue project to finish. I did mention to you guys when I said I was gonna be backing off to committing to only one video versus two a week for a little while that I felt like I didn't have time to really do a lot of things for myself, including reading books. And I mentioned I had a book that I had started eight months ago and hadn't finished. And you guys were very sweet in the comments of that video. You were like, go finish your book now. Well, I did finish the book. 
So now my next task is to finish this piece of artwork I'm about to show you. So this is a drawing that I've been doing for my dad of our last family cat that we owned. His name was Scooter. And I'm not even gonna tell you how long ago I started this. It, I've been bad, I've been bad, I've been bad. I need to finish this drawing. I am about three quarters of the way through it. So this is our next goal for personal you know, projects versus business projects or finding a new job or anything like that. And I think it's going pretty well so far. He was definitely a super fluffy, cute orange kitty, kind of like Toby, except that he was a Maine Coon mix. Toby is, I believe, a Somali mix. I'm pretty 99.9% .9 positive. But yeah, super cute guy. And as you can see, the head here looking pretty good. I just need to finish up everything from the neck down. Shouldn't take me too long to do it. I just need to actually like take the time to do it. But anyways, I'm gonna go put this back and we are gonna get started on watering. And real quick, I don't know if any of you out there use the Planta app. If you do, I don't know if it updated on your phone yet or not, but they released an update. I think it was, once again, I've lost track of my days, you guys. I think it was during the last week. I could be wrong, but they released an update. And honestly, I was so ticked off when this update came through because there's like a massive bug in the program now that has messed up the showing the days, like how long it's been since you watered a plant or treated it or whatever, fertilized it. And it used to tell you like the number of days, it'd be like, it's been eight days since you watered this plant. And now it's like rounding up on some of the plants in the app. Some of them it's still showing days, but it's really confusing because it'll say you watered this plant one week ago. And if you actually go into the history, it'll tell you, oh no, it's been 11 days ago. And to me, that's not one week, one week is seven days. So I've been very frustrated with the app. I did reach out to them though. They are aware of the bug and they're in the process of fixing it. So if you were equally as frustrated, there is a fix coming on the way, but it has made taking care of my plants a little bit more difficult because when I do get behind on watering like I have now, lots of times I find it's a little bit quicker if I go into that app and I just look like, okay, when's the last time I watered this plant? And I have it set up, well, I actually assign all my plants to rooms, which you can in that app create what they call sites. So I have like living room, kitchen door, kitchen window, dining room, etc. And so I can go in just by each room in the app and I can look at which plants, you know, I know I probably need to check on versus which ones are probably okay. And honestly, it's really been saving me a lot of time until that update came through and the days got all messed up. But we're gonna be using that to kind of check and figure out which plants potentially need to be watered. And then I'm just gonna go physically check on those ones and make sure they do need to be watered. And once again, we're just gonna go room by room, get everybody watered down. I did water all of the propagations last night because some of them were wilting. So the propagations are good to go. We just need to work on my like permanent collection plants. So let's just go ahead since we're in the living room and we'll start with this room.
By some miracle, nothing in the kitchen needs to be watered. Nothing in the office needs to be watered. And we have one plant upstairs that needs to be watered and one plant in the dining room that needs to be watered. So let's just go ahead and we'll get those two watered first and then we'll head into the bedroom and start taking care of those plants because I know there are some in there that need to be watered. And actually looking at this, <laughs> I don't think any of the ones in my bathroom need to be watered either. I don't understand. I feel like I'm so behind on watering. I thought for sure we would have more plants we needed to water today, but whatever, at least we're getting the ones done that need to be done. you guys I did want to show you a couple of interesting things that I noticed when I was checking some of the plants in the kitchen to see if they needed to be watered. So this is the variegated Monstera adansonii that I got from Aeroid Asia and it is now permanently living outside of the Ikea cabinet. The humidity has been up in like the 45 to 50 percent range just normally in my house right now so I felt comfortable bringing it out. It's doing perfectly fine. We still have that one yellow leaf from when it arrived that was I mean, it's just partially yellow, but hey, 
it hasn't gotten worse, which means it must have enough green on it to be photosynthesizing and everything. And our new leaf has fully hardened off. That is this one right here. And I can see what looks like, yep, we got another one on its way. But here's what I was happy to see because I hadn't seen it yet and it was making me anxious. So we have root growth going on. If you can see, there are roots spreading around in this pot now. Now it definitely took longer for them to start to spread on this one than it did on the Monstera Thai constellation, but we are spreading now, so that's making me very happy. And then I noticed on the back side here, we have two aerial roots starting to grow and make their way down into the soil right there. Those two little roots trying to grow down into the soil. So super excited about that. This plant is looking very happy, but I also noticed something interesting on the Hoya macrophylla red. So let me grab that real quick. So this plant has been making me all kinds of nervous. <laughs> and part of the reason is because Hoyas have such fine root systems and they were really kind of jumbled up when I potted this plant up. And so I knew it was gonna be a while before I would be able to see them on the outside of this. This is like, I think this was a coffee cup, I think. And so I just converted it into a pot, but I knew it was gonna be a while before I saw the roots spreading on the edges because they were so kind of jumbled up in the middle. But because I couldn't see them, it was making me so nervous about like potentially overwatering this plant. So I've been keeping a very close eye on it, but I did notice our first root has spread to the edge. It is a very fine. Hopefully you can see it right there. Thank you camera for actually focusing. It's just that one little root right there, but that makes me happy and it's super white and healthy looking. So I am feeling good that I have not potentially overwatered this plant. Now, if you don't follow me on Instagram or Facebook at Aloha Plant Life, you would not have seen my story about why this leaf is green. So as you can see, when this plant is getting enough light, it will stay kind of reddish, almost kind of orange, sometimes yellowish in color. However, even though it is a macrophylla red, if it does not get enough light, it will go green on you. And this leaf is very, very green. And the reason it is green is because this big old leaf has been blocking it from getting direct light. So it's just one of those things that happens sometimes. It's just kind of funny. It looks kind of funny, but you know, he's unique and we like unique leaves and unique plant babies. So we're okay with it, but let me get this guy put back away. And there's one other like random task I'm looking at, <laughs> looking at it right now that I want to take care of before we move on to the spring cleaning stuff. So let me get you repositioned and we'll take care of that. Okay, so I also recently posted on Instagram and Facebook about this parallel peperomia, and in particular, this one vine right here that is being kind of crazy. And you'll notice that the leaves on this one are coming in. They aren't coming all the way in. We're getting like one leaf instead of what should be four. Sometimes, honestly, you guys, it's three and every now and again, I get a five leafer. But I think it's because it's growing further and further away from the light. And part of what makes me think that is, if you'll notice here, all of those leaves are turning themselves around towards the light versus, let me see if I can angle you guys up a little bit. Those that are facing the light, as you can see, those leaves are sticking themselves straight towards that window. So I think that's why we're seeing less leaf growth as this one vine gets further and further away from the window. But regardless, it is way too long. It is dragging across my couch. So we're gonna go ahead and cut it off either I think we're gonna cut it right below that one maybe. And then we're gonna go ahead and propagate this real quick. And I think I'm gonna to try to start it in water, you guys. But the last time I tried to propagate this plant in the water, it, it did nothing, so I don't know. We'll see, let's just go ahead and get it cut first. Okay, you guys, I'm just gonna put it in some water for now and I'm gonna make a decision later about whether I'm just gonna leave it in here or put it in soil. If I leave it in here, I'm gonna cut this into more than just one vine. And actually also if I put it into soil, I'm also gonna cut it into more than one vine, but I'm just not sure what I wanna do yet. So we're gonna take care of our next task and then we'll address this later. Okay, you guys, so now it's time to move on to the spring cleaning task, which is going to be cleaning windows. And I hate cleaning windows, I really do. That's why I haven't really cleaned the windows since I moved in this house. Actually, that's not true. That's not entirely true. For those of you who have been here for a while and if you are new, welcome, but you'll know that I did replace a bunch of the windows in my house. I guess it's almost been two years ago now. And so obviously they were brand new, so they were nice and clean. And I have cleaned those windows once on the inside. 
I am better about cleaning on the inside than I am on the outside for sure. But the other windows that were the original windows that came with the house, like other than the one upstairs where I took the solar screen off so that we could actually put plants upstairs, I did clean that window when I did that. Other than that, yeah, no, no. And I'm gonna try to show you the front windows downstairs here because they are by far the worst. And those are northern facing windows. So my plants in those windows already aren't getting as much light as my other plants in the house. And I'm not helping them by leaving the windows super filthy. So I'm gonna try to show you how dirty they are. I don't know how well I'm gonna get it to show up because it is pretty bright outside today, but we'll see. And then we're gonna give it a go at cleaning them. I'm, I'm kind of dreading it, you guys. They're, they're pretty filthy. They're pretty filthy. Okay, you guys, so hopefully you can see that haze. I mean, it looks clear on the viewfinder on the camera here to me, so hopefully when I'm editing you can see this, but that doesn't look crystal clear, and it's not because of the light shining through, it's because it is filthy. My plants, these plants right here, they are not going to know what to do with themselves once I clean these windows. It's gonna be probably like twice as much light that they're getting. But let me go grab my cleaning stuff and we'll get started on this. Okay, so one of my friends gave me one of these special microfiber cloth cleaning things that's supposed to work with just like water. So it's got water on it. We're gonna see how well it does. This window's pretty dirty, so I'm not sure this is gonna cut it, but we'll see. <laughs> not what I wanted to discover. So it definitely was dirty. I mean, you can see like the grime on here, but it's nowhere near as dirty as like the original window I cleaned upstairs on the inside. It is mostly dirty on the outside, which means I am probably gonna have to move this project outdoors, but we're gonna go ahead and finish cleaning up these two windows on the inside first. Okay, so I'm not sure if you guys can tell the difference or not, but actually the lower part of the window was way dirtier on the inside than the upper part. And can you tell like how much clearer this looks? I haven't done the other window yet. And see, it still looks really kind of foggy. This looks like a thousand times clearer. Hopefully you can tell on camera in person, it's like very obvious. Then you can see that one's still pretty foggy. But this one, well, we got too much light coming through it to tell. Maybe I'll try it from another angle. Hold on. Okay, so it's just too hard to tell on those right now, you guys. But it is definitely clearer than this one. But it's definitely still super foggy because the outside is so dirty. So definitely going to have to do the outside. But I'm going to go ahead and get the inside of this one done real quick first. Actually, you guys, I take that back because I kind of want to be able to do a comparison between the one window that hasn't been cleaned at all and the one that is totally clean. So we're taking this outside. you guys so we have our fully cleaned window over here and our uncleaned window over here and hopefully you guys can tell even though the lighting is kind of crazy just how much clearer this window looks I mean I think it's really obvious at the top here let me pull these blinds up real quick oh yeah I mean surely you guys can tell especially when that car just drove by how much cleaner this is so my plants are going to be super happy now that these windows are clean and I will say the outside was definitely much grosser and filthier both at the top and bottom, but mostly at the top. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up doing this window outside and the ones in the dining room, and then I'm gonna do the insides and we will be done with this little spring cleaning task.
thousand times better. Let me come around this way so maybe it'll be a little bit easier to tell how much clearer the glass is, but so much better, so much brighter in here. Like I love it just for me, but the plants are going to be a, so much happier. Let's go check the ones in the dining room. I mean, it's just such a major difference, you guys. If you have not cleaned your windows recently, go grab some cleaning supplies and get to cleaning. Your plants will thank you. Okay, so now that we've got this done, I think we're gonna deal with potting up the parallel peperomia propagation we did earlier and then possibly repot the Hoya. So I'll meet y'all in the kitchen. Okay, you guys, so I've got some of my epiphyte mix ready to go here. That's what we need for this parallel peperomia. It is an epiphytic type of peperomia. And then we also need the epiphyte mix for the Hoya, which I think we are gonna do I can't believe it's already like 3.50. We started the day off, well, we started recording at nine. It's been a long day. So this is definitely like the last two things we're gonna be doing. But for this guy, what I'm gonna do is, so first of all, where these leaves are, right around here, that's where all of the roots are gonna start to come out of. But I don't necessarily need to remove the leaves. And I know that for a fact because I stuck that last propagation I did that never rooted in water. I stuck it in the soil of the mama plant just like this and I just made sure that that area around those leaves was actually touching the soil and it rooted. So we're gonna put that one in there and I think what we're gonna do is we're going to, I'm trying to decide how many pieces we're gonna cut this into. Cause I could put that in there and make this the new growth point although I don't think I need to. You know what, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this one in there by itself. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut this here and then I'm going to remove this leaf and we're going to bury this node right here and then we'll keep this growth point up here and that will be where the new growth comes from for that one. And the only reason I'm removing that leaf is because I want to bury it all the way under and I don't want this leaf to potentially like rot and cause a problem but I'm not going to remove the next leaf because that's going to help with the photosynthesis for that to create its roots. And then I think we'll basically do the same thing with this one. So we'll cut this leaf off, bury this node, and then leave the newest growth point as a growth point. So just gonna cut right here, get that leaf off. And then, so that'll be good. So that'll be three vines and we're going in just a little clear three inch pot so I can see when the roots are coming in and everything. And I think that will be good. So let's get this glass of water out of the way. Go ahead and get some of our epiphyte mix, mix it up a little bit more. Get some of this down in the bottom here. Well, actually, these I can just shove into this mix. So we're just gonna fill this all the way up and then shove those down in there. And then because this is epiphyte mix, I'm gonna have to make sure this stays pretty moist and doesn't dry out too much while this plant is trying to develop roots. Once it develops roots, then yes, definitely, this is a plant where I let that soil pretty much dry all of the way out. But if I let it get too dry while it's propagating, then the roots are never gonna develop. That's pretty full. Okay, so we're just gonna start putting these down in here. Maybe we should do this one first since it's gonna take up the most space. And I think we'll just stick it kind of in the middle. So, like I said, I'm just gonna kind of shove it down in there so that the leaves are partially, like the bottom of the leaves are partially under the soil so that that way those roots will develop from that node. And then we're gonna stick these in wherever the heck we have room. Let's see, I guess we'll do one over here. And I might have to bobby pin that one down in there. 
And this is a very stiff vined plant. That's one of the reasons I'm able to just kind of shove these in there. Plus epiphyte mix is not exactly like, you know, solid and hard to get through. Put this one over on this side. And this one actually, let me grab my chopstick. Okay, so because this was the new growth point, it's not as stiff, the vine's not as stiff yet. So I'm just gonna use my chopstick to kind of make the hole on this side. And if you need to do that, that's always fine. Also, because it is epiphyte mix, those big pieces of bark sometimes get in the way when you're trying to shove a vine down in there without some assistance. But we've got it in there now. Okay, I think I'm gonna go get a paper clip from my office and open it up and put it around that center one just to get it to stay down because it's gonna keep wanting to like pop back up out of that soil. Actually, I just remembered I had one laying on the kitchen table from a different plant that didn't need it anymore. So that was easy. So just gonna get this worked down in here. And just so you know, the one that I tried to propagate in water before <laughs> that didn't work, I had to do the same thing. I had to use I either use a paper clip or a bobby pin to hold it in place in the mama plant too because it kept wanting to pop out. I think I'm hitting bark. Yep, hitting a big old chunk of bark. Let's move that. There we go. All right, I think we're good. So we're just gonna water this and actually might as well just use this water since it's here. Even though apparently I'm gonna make a complete and total mess while trying to pour it out of this glass, but that's okay. Alrighty, set this guy aside. And I'm probably just gonna put him on my propagation cart in the kitchen since that's getting nice bright light right now, which is what those plants like. I think he's gonna be happier with that than he would be in the Ikea cabinet, which is the other option. So let me, let me get these bits we cut off thrown away. Move this stuff out of the way and I will grab the Hoya from behind me and we will work at getting that out of its pot. Okay, so here is our beautiful Hoya. So let me get this hanger off of here. And we are going to go into a different clear pot here because I want to be able to see what's happening with the roots. Huh. It's a little different than the hangers that I have on other pots like this. What the heck? Oh, I see. Okay. Ooh. Say I see, and then I almost knocked things over. All right, there we go. We're off. Okay, we're going to use this bigger tray here to kind of see what we're working with and remove the, the extra, the awful incorrect soil that I'm pretty sure is on here. I mean, it looks really peaty. We're going to find out as soon as we take it out. You want to come out for me? Come on. There we go. And also, as I anticipated, this is a very unrooted plant, as you can see, which is interesting because with that much growth up top, I would have expected to see a lot more root action going on down here. But as you can see, this is, I mean, it's pure peat. It's like pure peat. There's hardly any even perlite in there, which honestly, if all they did was stick cuttings in here and wanted them to root, which is kind of what this looks like might have happened, then yeah, peat's probably the best option to go with to encourage the roots to develop just when you're propagating because that way you don't have to like rewater as often. But that's not the best type of soil for this plant to be in long term. This is going to be interesting, you guys, because honestly, given the amount of root action, this could be too big. So I'm just going to get to work trying to get this soil off. We'll see how much plant we're actually working with. And if this is just a bunch of cuttings, which looking at it, you guys, it is. It is, because look, oh, great. We have leaf falling off now. This cutting's already trying to fall out on the side here. All right, well, unfortunately, what we're gonna end up doing here is we're gonna break this up into all the separate cuttings and we are gonna repot them in a smaller pot, most likely, with the correct type of soil. Here we go. Separated. Honestly, you guys, this is like the easiest peat soil removal I have ever had to do. It is so loose 
and these are obviously barely rooted. So I'm really glad that we're doing this. If you do have this situation when you buy a plant, this is one of those situations where I do encourage you to repot right away because this is like recipe for disaster and root rot and everything else. And oh, I don't even know. Okay, let me, since I'm pretty sure we're not going into that pot, maybe we still go in that pot. I don't know. I'm just gonna set this guy in his old pot. This one is not completely separated yet because I think it's tangled in another cutting. So I'm just kind of letting it hang out. There's another completely separated one. The rest of that soil off over here. And I am gonna rinse these off at the sink before we repot them because the leaves and everything are getting messy too. So make them nice and clean before we put them into their new soil and their new pot. There's another one completely separated. I'm telling you what, you guys. This plant was overpriced, even though I told you I think it went down in price probably about $5 from what it was last time we were there. I buying this situation like is deceiving because it looks amazing up top not really worth what you paid for it down below now if i am buying like online like plants from local people who are propagating themselves like sometimes i anticipate this i expect this i mean i'm straight up with people who buy my propagations that you know sometimes i'm like i they ask me like what else do you have when they come to buy plants and I show them, but I tell them, I'm like, I just potted it up. It's not gonna be fully rooted, but people are cool with that when they know, and I'm not charging like insane prices for it. And I'm donating a portion of it to a non-profitable organization. So lots of times they're more willing to buy from me just for that reason. But yeah, I mean, that's one thing, but going to a nursery, like, I it really, I mean, is it just me? Do you guys agree that this is ridiculous? Comment below and let me know. All right, so we got that one off. I'm not even counting how many are in here right now. We'll count in a second. Just wanna work at getting them kind of parted here. And these three are just kind of hanging on to each other. So let's see if I can work a little bit more of the soil off and maybe they'll separate on their own. If they don't, we're just gonna let them hang out together. You guys are friends. Your friends who don't wanna separate. Okay, all done. Let me try to get these ones worked out if they will. Or are you guys all just gonna be quadruplets? Okay, I'm gonna wash these four off at the sink together and see if we actually separate once we've washed some of this dirt off. Okay, these four are hanging on pretty tight to each other, so we are just gonna let them stay connected. They are bosom buddies. We are not going to try to force separate them. So just set them aside. I'm gonna rinse these ones off. And then we will start figuring this out. I think we actually still can use this pot. I think it'll be okay because we're gonna be using the epiphyte mix, which is way chunkier. Because otherwise, if we try to cram all of these into anything smaller, I think that's gonna be a bit much. So this is probably what we're gonna do. I feel like I'm running out of place to put things. All right, so that's four, five, six. We've got seven, eight. Eight cuttings in total, so at least it's a decent number of cuttings. That's why it looks so full. Get these last few rinse off. Okay. We are fairly good to go. I need a towel. All right. Still sad that we lost this leaf, but it's okay. All right, let's get this out of the way. What a mess. I think I can use this to kind of rake this crap out of my way. Kind of works well enough for our purposes to clean up just a little bit here. All right, here we go. And I did already poke drainage holes into the bottom of this using my soldering iron. I think I did this for something like a while back and then I decided not to use this pot. I don't even remember why. All right, so we're gonna start with a little bit of the epiphyte mix in the bottom. And I probably am gonna have to mix up a little bit more epiphyte mix here in a second, but let's just try to get everybody positioned first. Rinse my hand off again. It's like I just washed them and then I put my hand in dirt and then I pick them up and they get dirty again. I mean, seriously. Okay, let's see. Let's get our team of four together over here because hopefully we can spread them out some. I already forgot how many I said we had. Eight, nine, what did I say you guys? Four. 
five, six, uh, eight. Okay, good. So we just gotta space everybody out pretty evenly. I'm gonna try and just get these kind of close to the edge. And then that way we can just put the other four in the middle, I think. Maybe, I don't know. Depends on whether these wanna cooperate or not. This one's being a bit of a pain. Stay put, buddy. Okay, actually I think what we'll do is we'll do one, two, five, six. I think we're gonna do six around the edge or five around the edge and then the rest in the middle. So let's see, who's short? Whoever's short should go in the middle, I feel like. The longer ones we'll put on the edge because that'll make it look more full and trailing. You're really short, so let's put you in the middle. Put you over here. Okay, so that one can sit there. This is a nice long trailing one, so let's put you somewhere on the edge. This is gonna be hard to fill in. Um, I think I'm gonna try and start filling it in and pushing it over to this side before I put the ones in on that side because otherwise this is gonna be a bit of a pain and definitely a mess. Okay, I'm just going for it you guys, I don't even know. Dump it in here and then try to move it around. Okay, well that's enough to seem to, oh, I said it was enough to get them to stay put, but then that one went falling. Just go ahead, I'm just gonna get them in here. Okay, so we got this one there. Sure there aren't very many short ones. For this one tiny one here. All right, this is gonna be tricky to fill back in. So I'm gonna grab my tiny shovel because I have a feeling I'm gonna need it. Okay, I've got my tiny shovel and I went ahead and mixed up some more epiphyte mix for us. So let's see how well this is gonna go because there's just a lot of leaves to work around, you guys. This could be a very tedious, but I mean, you gotta get it in there somehow and it's gonna get all over the leaves. And Good news is this is like really dry, this mix. Uh, it's not like a fresh bag of anything. So I will water this plant right after we're done anyway. So I will take that opportunity to try to wash off all of the leaves that are gonna get all dirty again right now. Try and get some soil in on this very edge here real quick to try to keep this one down in place. Why am I doing this? Why do we always do this, you guys? Why do I put it over here? when I'm trying to shovel in on this side. Like, wh where is the logic in that? There is no logic in that, none whatsoever. Get around these leaves. I'm also kind of worried I'm gonna pop off more leaves because that one leaf just popped off out of nowhere. I don't even think I touched it that hard. But this is going pretty smoothly now, so I'm just gonna keep shoveling away and then we'll take a look at how everything looks when I'm done. back up here. Looks like we're filled in nicely. I don't really see any gaps in the pot. Everybody feels secure. And honestly, I didn't get her too dirty, but I'm still gonna give her a water down at the sink and rinse her off real quick. I don't know, I think that looks pretty good, you guys. That looks pretty still nice and full, right? Like, no, I think we're pretty good. I think that's gonna be nice. So let me get her rinsed off real quick.
All right, you guys, well, I had to relocate to a brighter spot because we are rapidly losing daylight, but she is looking beautiful. I'm just gonna keep her in a nice bright spot, probably right here in the kitchen window by the kitchen door behind where you guys are right now. I think she'll really be happy there and it'll take her a while to kind of really get those roots developed, but she'll do it and she will continue to grow and get even more beautiful. But I think I'm gonna call it a day because it is now 4.45 and I do have a laundry to do. I have a bunch of missed calls, so I have people I need to call back, but I feel like we accomplished quite a bit today and I feel like I'm kind of in a better space, back on track, everything's kind of good. I feel like I can be more productive, especially in my office now. And tomorrow I'm gonna to start doing a more specific to-do list every day because when I did still have my job, there were things I had to do every day and I just knew them in my head. I only really made to-do lists for things that were not something that I had to do every single day. And I think if I start doing an actual to-do list of everything, that will help me get back on track as well. So the plan is to start that first thing tomorrow morning and we will see if that helps as well. But I hope you guys have enjoyed coming along with me today. If so, please be sure to click that like and or subscribe button down below. And I look forward to seeing you again the next time. Aloha.